Hi, everybody. So we're here to talk about revamping the project application process. Let's make it out of this. Take me out. Uh, hi, I'm David Hernandez. Um, I am a member of the Drupal.org software working group, which is a governance group. Uh, it's part of the Drupal project and part of Drupal.org. I'm sure you all know about that. Who doesn't know about the governance group? If you don't know, go to drupal.org slash governance and you'll find out about all the different groups. Um, Software Working Group specifically um, is the one responsible for uh, most of the workings of the Drupal.org website itself and the community facing website. And I'm Michael Hess. I am in the security working group, which is actually not a drupal.org group. It's covers the Drupal project, but also like interfaces and strings and Drupal ways with Drupal.org itself. Um, and we are presenting on this topic today. However, unfortunately, neither of the two working groups that we represent own the actual policy we're discussing. Yeah, the policy is owned by the technical working group, which is another governance group. Um, that <laughs> group is um, actually responsible for most of the technical policy making that affects the Drupal project as a whole. Um, none of their members could be here today, um, but they were responsible and um, they did a lot of the legwork for making these policy decisions. And it was really a group effort between people who really cared, um, making sure that security concerns were met and making sure that we had changes that were necessary the community wanted and that there were things that we'd be able to implement on Drupal.org. And so we're gonna review the current process here yeah, so the current process, we know people complain a lot about, we hear those complaints, and that's one of the reasons why we started this process. Um, we know currently it's, it's very slow. Um, from the time someone initiates um, a project review to the time they actually get vetted can take months, years sometimes, um, and it, it's been a, a huge pain point for developers in Drupal.org. Um, it's, it's something that's actively been hurting the community, so we want to make sure that we try to do something about it. Um, it relies way too much on um, human uh, work, um, having uh, reviewers actually manually review code, check projects, test them out, uh, manage the queue, uh, provide feedback, almost you know, really mentor some of the new developers and make sure they're doing things correctly, using APIs correctly, uh, make sure that their um, the code style is correct, uh, doing things like checking for project duplication and all this sort of stuff. It's just, it's a really long, involved, um, almost painful process for new developers and something that they're not normally used to, especially if you've been using, say, GitHub to just publish a path on it. And you can just do that right away. Um, so this, this process discourages a lot of people and it, it ends up creating this sort of two-tiered or multi-tiered environment that we have in the community where there's the haves and have nots, the people who've already been vetted, who um, get to join the club and walk right in, do whatever they want, and the people who haven't gotten in yet, especially for older developers who've been around the Drupal community for a long time, uh, people who never had to actually get vetted. Um, and I think this is one of the reasons why this process um, has gone on for so long this way because it's not a pain point for people who've already been through it or people who've been around for say 10 years, right? They don't understand the, um, the frustration for new developers. So it hasn't really been a high priority um, to do anything about it. Um, but there are things about the process that work. Um, it helps us limit the number of spam projects that created. You know, if we just had a, fully, a completely open system where everyone could just dump whatever they want in Drupal.org, you would have all kinds of problems, you know, malicious code, terrible code, um, people that just try to do bad things and are using Drupal.org as just their place to put these terrible things out there. Um, and, you know, if we, we think module, module duplication is a problem, obviously it'd be 10 times worse if it's just completely open. Um, and all of those problems um, create security problems, and that's something that adds a huge workload to the security team. Um, Drupal security is a really a selling point for the project as a whole. It's something that we consider seriously. Uh, we like to tell people how secure it is and how the modules are secure for the most part. 
Um, it's a really good starting point for enterprises, for all kinds of people. So if we um, want to continue this, um, this policy we have now of doing security reviews and um, having security advisories for all the projects and we just implement floodgates and have millions of projects coming to us, just think it would be a model of work for security teams that have to build out and it, it would obviously would be cleaner. So I brought up the slide. Fauci, who is kind of spearheading the project application. Yeah, he's like one of the main, main people behind admin. it. Is also a member of the security team and he points heavily to reviewing projects with security eye and about 10% of the issues had major security problems with them in the first year or two years. And that's from February, so he's probably keeping that trend going. Uh, so, you know, we, we there's been this pain point and we've tried to find a process to address the pain point. And I think we've got some goals along addressing that pain point, but we should preface this, at least I'm gonna preface this, with this is a, it's a step in the right direction. It's not gonna solve all the problems, but it's gonna get us in the right direction. Yeah, um, there was a lot of discussion um, posted online. If you look at that link that's at the bottom, it's node 245357. Um, this is where I posted the full policy. You, you'll see most of it in these slides. Um, but it's, it's fully written out there and there's a rather large discussion about it in the community about different things that they liked and didn't like. Um, so feel free to review it and add more comments if you think necessary. Uh, we'll sort of do a, a brief version of it, but what we really wanna do is make sure that we don't just um, describe the policy changes and the new procedures, but give some explanation behind why we're doing certain things that we're doing. Uh, we understand that some people want us to go further than we're going, but there's reasons why we're not going further. As Michael said, we're gonna do some baby steps. We're gonna see some things, see how they work. Um, if they do work, um, we'll progress. If they don't work, we'll find new solutions. But we can't just do everything right away in one step because if we do, it's, um, it's uh, you know, letting, letting the horse out of the barn. It's hard to put it back once you do. So if we were to completely get everything up, it would be almost impossible to go backwards from there. Um, so some of the things we're trying to do is get rid of this two-tiered system. So treat all of our developers equally, um, not just give preference to people who happen to have just been here for a while or know the right people. Uh, we still wanna make sure that we prevent insecure and badly written code. Um, we don't want to just turn people.org into GitHub with all kinds of random garbage if we can prevent it. Um, we do want to give sandbox users some installable releases, so that's one of the things people have really been asking for. Um, we, we, that sort of sandbox um, idea was a bit of a stopgap, but it was a nice way for people to post their projects, but they still don't like it because you have to check them out. Um, the, we're gonna go into um, how we're going to promote a project and the people who are able to promote their first project that get the vanity URLs, they will be discoverable. So right now, if you create a sandbox, you just get a URL that's like google.org slash user sandbox, one, two, three, four, yep. five, six, blah, 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 and it doesn't, the project, it doesn't really show up in the main searches and things like that. Um, but we're gonna have a few changes where people can promote a single project and that would show up in the searches. Is this the same one? Yeah. We'll, we'll yeah, go through we'll the go slides. Through that. Yeah. Um, and uh, we're adding a lot of automation to the process, which would help reduce the workload for the reviewer. Um, it, we, we really are growing at a scale that we have to reduce the manual workload as much as possible and move towards a, a basically a fully automated system if we can. I think that's the only way we're going to keep up with the demand that we have, or at least get to get the human factor down to the point where it's things that are simpler, or at least the things that we want, and not uh, all of these other things that could be automated. So what is the new policy? We're gonna outline some of the key points of the policy and some of the new procedures. So all projects will get scanned by automated code review tools. Uh, this is actually a live screenshot from google.org right now. Um, and this is available to people at the administrator role to see. 
Uh, it needs some cleanup, so we make it available to more people because it was there and it is in the uh, the real time now with the final state of things. What it flags again at the moment is base PCA review, which is the current tool in the scan repository, but it's base PCA.org and formed by Nick Mayer. Um, the summary data around this are is actually going to be made public for every project. So whether it's a used or a brand new project that someone just created and the number of warnings, the number of errors is going to end up becoming cut public. So we're going to have some numeric metric around code um, goodness, shall we say, for lack of a better term. <laughs> project health metric. Pro thank you. Project health metric. Uh, in addition to the number of open issues, the number of closed issues, uh, the little graph that we're drawing out there now, this will probably show up in the next couple plays. This is actually going into the database and then ended up in the next play for development more easily. The barrier to this at the moment is project application review doesn't really work well for projects that are huge, that are getting that uh, from a few, and it has, I think, I guess, a meg of errors that it's getting from people that are just doing this for fun. So it needs some work to make it more translatable, but it's there, it's in place, and it's running out of a Docker container, so if you'd like to sprint on this, let me know, and I can set you up with how to do that and how to test it and so on. Um, once we get that taken care of, the result, the full result, which is what you're seeing there, will be sent to project maintainers so they can actually see what, you know, what the details are and correct their code. So rather than a uh, project application review person telling them, hey, you need to do this, this, and this, they check in their code, they pull up the results, shows them what they need to do, they fix their code, they check it in, shows them what they still need to do, and they can fight the test spot, so to speak, so to speak. Uh, but they're fighting a computer as opposed to a person that's making things up there. And that right, it reduces that wait time. Um, and we have not discussed quite yet what will, what will block a project. So we'll obviously we'll get warnings versus errors, and, and you know, at some point there'll be a bigger discussion as to what exactly we flag as a problem being, and what we'll definitely put a stop to uh, project promotion. And speaking of project promotion, speaking of project promotion, we're going to basically make every user, Git vetted users, non-Git vetted users, start with a sandbox first, check in some amount of code, and then mark the project ready to be submitted. Yeah, so we have design work, I think, to do. Um, obviously, like, these are the implementation details that we haven't gone over yet, um, and that's going to come later. So some of the, the questions and discussions we've had before uh, with some people is that, you know, how is this part going to work and, and, you know, is it going to be implementation detail, which will be public and will get worked on. We'll have desi designers involved. We'll have community people involved. But, yeah, it's, it's essentially going to be probably like a button or a link that will click and say, I want to now promote this project, I'm ready to do it, and it's going to happen just to make sure that we don't have any of the flags that we decide on. Um, you know, and a key point is that only the owner of that project will be able to initiate the promotion, which is a slightly different change than what we have now, um, to stop some people who are sort of skirting the rules by having other people sort of take over the project and do it for them and then hand it back, things like that. Um, it really is about um, getting that individual through the process um, and, and incentivizing them to do it. Um, so if it passes, um, you get promoted, um, you'll be able to take on a namespace. So you don't have to deal with those ugly sandbox URLs anymore. If you actually want your project to have a specific name or a specific URL, you'll be able to choose it. And this is before going through the actual vetting process. So you'll get that one project. Um, you'll get a nice URL for it. Then you can begin the um, project application process to get vetted. Yes. Uh, so non vetted users are going to end up with some restrictions on them. They can only have one project at a time promoted to full status. That's for really two reasons. One, to prevent grabbing of namespaces and squatting on it. And two, to like encourage them to still go through the whole Git vetted process, but hopefully it'll be easier once we have some of these other changes that while they could be promoted. Uh, the promoted projects will have development snapshots, those are just the releases that appear in red at the bottom of the page, but won't be able to have tagged releases, so no green releases. They are not able to create a supported release because that invokes the security team at that point um, until they've gone through it. And the project page and potentially update status will have some type of warning that this is 
experimental, non-vetted code, and that the project is not gonna be subject to security advisory or security teams or interplay, so to speak. Uh, so that new users to the community who find a project get a little extra warning that what they're about to download may be not that safe. Yeah, so let's, I mean, let's talk a little bit about why so that you guys understand. Um, as Michael said, this is about pushing people towards the acquisition process, not just giving them the candy. Um, so like one of the questions we got continuously is why only allow one project to be promoted and why not three or five or something like that? Well, obviously, a, a lot of people when they're creating projects, these developers, you know, maybe you only have one or two or three projects that you're ever gonna create and become a maintainer of. So if we allow you to create five of them without ever getting vetted, what is your incentive to actually ever go through the process where you can create five and then be done with it? So that's why we really wanna limit it to one so that we can, we can give you that one project when you're a new contributor um, and you've got that itch to scratch and, and people tell you, hey, why don't you contribute that thing that you made? You can just go ahead and do it right away uh, without um, us holding you back. But we hold you, hold you back just from going further um, just so that we can go through the vetting process. Um, and the same thing with the, the development snapshot of we only wanna give people dev releases, but we wanna give them those releases so they get that download link that shows up on the project page that they don't have now. So if somebody gives out that project to a friend of theirs and says, here it is, they download it, they at least get that link and someone can get a tarball or a zip file without having to get, get the, get the project out. But again, we don't wanna give them full releases because we, we don't want to misrepresent the project and the developer as being a full project when having already downloaded the patch file. Yeah, so that includes Brush Yeah, I wanna stay in. Would that include Brush Access and then the ability to do the daily builds and updates? Yes, because if it's a, it's a release on GitHub.org, it's a Brush Review on GitHub, so you can do a Brush PL project management as well as find the project name and download it. So the project acquisition process, um, will it, it'll be different, but you'll still have to essentially do what we're doing now, where you'll have to you know, submit something in the queue, and we can probably automate this as you know as part of that button where it creates an issue in the queue, um, lets us know what project you're trying to promote, and then you know immediately um, someone can start looking at it. The nice thing is because it's already been scanned and gone through that whole process, the reviewers then know the legitimacy to the project that it's passed all of our gate. Um, so it should be relatively free of certain like code style problems and a lot of the other stuff that you know we normally deal with. Um, and the reviewer can go ahead and just start reviewing, not having to worry a lot about a lot of that sort of administrative overhead of saying, hey, you didn't include the readme file, which we think that's important. Or you know, oh, your, your spacing is wrong, or you didn't do certain things, and like that's part of what takes so long. Um, so we'll do that, um, and then once they re review, we sort of reduce uh, the burden on the reviewer as far as what they have to check for. So we're pretty much getting rid of the whole idea of mentoring people when they go through the process, um, except for small things like, hey, you should have done this instead of that. We encourage the reviewers to notify um, people about certain mistakes they've made, but we really don't want to hold up the project. We just want to ensure that the project is minimally viable in a way. I mean, because after all, these are still dev projects, right? We shouldn't consider that it's a full 1.0 viable project when someone submits it. Um, after all, we do the same thing. People you know, who are already vetted will create a new project and the first thing to do is put it in dev and then say, well, I'm working on it and I have a beta team. So it's like, why do you get to wait on a beta but the person going through the project application has to be basically release ready when they do it. Um, so, we, but we still need to make sure that there aren't licensing problems because that's an issue for GitHub.org, so that's mandatory. Um, and the reviewers are gonna check for security and they're gonna check for API usage. But we want major API usage. If someone basically looks like they've used Drupal before and written a module before, um, that's what we want. And we wanna check the module and see that it doesn't look like someone who has no idea what they're doing and has never even looked at the documentation and is doing all kinds of crazy things and just coming from a full PHP background and 
So again, you can Google Cloud Zip Red, and you can't, you know, things where like we've seen people, um, you know, building out pages and not ever using a separate menu because they didn't know that was a thing. And it's like, well, if that's not a thing, we probably shouldn't let you zip red and tell you how to do that correctly. Um, but we don't want to like handhold and completely mentor people or turn them into, you know, A1 project maintainers uh, because it's just a lengthy process. And that should really be more of a volunteer process, something that they want to do. And, you know, we can provide that, but we don't want to hold up their application and basically the, the rights to their accounts on it and things like that. And things that can often be a bit of opinionated from reviewers. Uh, we want to keep it strict to the technical stuff. Like this, we're not allowing this project to go through because you did something really bad, something really impure, or you did something really terrible with the API, we have to flag it. So we should assume, co come from the point of view of assuming a project will go through and you're looking for something to stop it as opposed to you looking for permission to, to get it to work. And this last point here, that's actually already being done right now. Yes. And it has been for a while by Klaus C and Matt mm -hmm. and I and all the others in the, in the Git application or in the project application queue. We're, we're actually probably a little less lenient or more lenient more than lenient. some of the novice yeah. users that are helping us out in the queue. So just something to think of, you know, if, if you get flagged on something because it's an <coughs> API Drupal usage thing, security, yeah, that's always going to flag you. But if it's a Drupal API thing, you don't have to fix all of the stuff because the Git admins probably aren't going to flag it. it. It depends on the API. Most of the API, mis some API misuse is going to lead to security issues, and even if the way you've misused the API is the correct way to do it. What I'm trying trying to say is, um, it's gotten a bad name, right. and I'm trying to address that that bad name. Yes, obviously we need to address security. Yeah, uh, I think also part of it is um, as we do these policy changes, is to make sure that. This is actually written down and approved so that um, if there are conflicts and people are going through the process can actually point to something and say, no, you're not supposed to stop me on something like that. And I, I think that's important. We look at it from the reviewer's point of view, but we also have to look at it from the applicant's point of view as well and make sure that they're being treated fairly and that they have a way to respond in the process they can go through and resolve that conflict. So with the reviews in the project application queue, is that is that data that we'd want to keep with the project? I mean, I'm, I'm thinking in, in terms of a, an example project. I looked at this module that implemented an API for a third-party service, and I was like, looked into the code and was like, wow, I, I don't know if I want to use this. And then I found it in the project application queue, and DMAN had given a really long, thorough review of everything that needed to be fixed on this module and various information. I was like, wow, this is really he just saved me so much time of me actually looking at it. Is there value in surfacing those sorts of reviews up to the module project page, or is that something that we... To the project page? So actually, uh, yeah, so like when you ask for a stand, when you ask for, when you create the sandbox and ask for the Git Red to use it, basically you're putting that issue link on the project page so that people can find the project stand, the, the full project that yet, where the author yet has Get Red to use it. I think that's what you were saying. Um, can find that issue much easier than having to search some of the queue for the name on the page. Oh, so you're saying. Uh, and related to that, I think once that project application has been approved, there still might be some minor feedback that probably should be opened up in an issue over in the project queue. Th and I think that's lessons for me as a Git admin and, and others, right? We need to be thinking about that in, in a process and procedures. Sure, like when I to make sure that find we a syntax are error out. or something, not a big deal, we won't hold it up, I'll file an issue in your project and approve it anyway. I would agree. Yeah, and I think when you I think as Git admins we, we, we don't do that. We need to. I think that's good lessons. Okay. Good notes for us. Or make the author of the page do it. As or a, as an as a learning experience. Maybe that's one of the tasks. Let's just but, the um, light on. <laughs> oh, oh it is on. Uh, or, or would it be valuable to have a way to take the issue once it's closed in the project application queue and just move it to the project 
so that it's a closed issue in that new project queue so that to. it's historical and it's easy to find and you can see the process, you know. What well, I guess it depends on how much history we want in the project application queue, if you can, if those issues are new. Well, we could we could put a tag on it and leave it up. I'm sorry. Right. I mean, I, I definitely do want more uh, metadata for those applications um, because we want to know things like you know we've just we've been discussing all day things like uh, who are the reviewers and how much credit are they getting for the reviews that they do. Um, so we want to make sure that we do have that kind of information, um, and that that could be really useful in the future too. Like. We know that not only this is the top ten reviewer, but they're on a six day count of best reviews. We see that the projects really like bring up all the fewer problems or ones that keep getting bounced back or have security issues are all being reviewed by the same person. Maybe there's something that they're not strong at reviewing that could be some help there for some change. I think that's all useful information. Any other questions? But I, I think this is great because I've been working on a pro module for a year now, and it's it's substantial. It's 3,500 3, lines of JavaScript and 2,500 lines of PHP, and I'm having a hard time getting anyone to even look at it. It's so, but it's uh, it's a module to edit images, rotate, and contrast, and saturation right in Drupal. And I, I think it's I, I, my question actually, but I'm going to have a question: is when do you see this change taking place? So the policy change is really immediate. It's already been voted on and approved by the technical working group. So technically that's really done. Um, the code scanner is in place. As Michael said, it's already working and scanning projects. What we have to do is get to a point where we think the scanner is working really well, um, discuss uh, the things we want to flag, and then we'll probably have to open it in some primitive mode at some point and test it out and then maybe have a few test cases, test projects that we go through. Um, but until the scanner is done and working properly, we can't do the other things like the project promotion to be available in URLs and stuff like that. We'll probably hold off on that for a bit. Um, but there are things that have been worked on since the beginning of the year and we can't continue to work on them right now. Could you clarify a little bit uh, the Git vetting status? Uh, I've got I'm a maintainer on a couple of modules that I inherited, but I don't have a way that I can see to promote a sandbox project. So are those are those two separate permissions or? There's no promote a sandbox like button right now. Okay. Um, you but I don't yeah, I don't see a way to yeah, create yeah, a named I project. I meant the I was thinking about this thing. Um, yeah, so you're not vetted. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if. I don't think there's anything I can tell you on like your your user page or anything. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no. Uh, yeah, but I, I but do I do have Git access <laughs> on several projects. Cases. So. Uh, no, no, an official project. A couple of official projects that I inherited and. Yeah, anyone ported. can be added as a maintainer to another project. Okay. Uh, as long as you, what is it? You, as long as you've agreed to the Git. Um, you have agreed to get part of it. Yeah, yeah the the Git um, a user agreement thing, whatever. Okay, because I've got a sandbox project that is just about ready to uh, to you go through to the go application through project. Through the application process. Okay, so. Yeah. You know, honestly, now that I think about it, that's probably something that would be useful for the application process to know if that person's already listed as a maintainer on other projects. Yeah, and then we can just check and like the, the reviewers know, oh, this person's already been working on things and committing and see the work they've been doing. That might be an interesting thing to do with the review process would be just to take every single maintainer who's not Git vetted, drop them onto a list and have some process whereby a Git admin goes through on some regular basis and says, yeah, these people are, are cool. Let's go ahead and bump them up the Git title. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> or is your staff volunteering? Uh, it depends on the number. I mean, if it were if it were something reasonable that were 
you know, it's that we could do with yeah. an hour a month, that would be totally worth it for the community. But um, if it's something where, you know, I have to dedicate a whole person to it, not just that. It's hard to know, like if you've been given access to a module, it's hard to know what contributions were yours or mm -hmm. made on GitHub user and what ones weren't. But we're getting a little off of topic and I want to kind of stay on topic. So. Well, I actually had an idea related to that, but it may be, if it's off topic, um, Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, the idea was um, we've got the new, the new new user tag, and mm -hmm. let people kind of vet users saying they're not a spam bot, but maybe surface that for people who are get vetted, you know, saying you know this is someone who is in this kind of gray area status, and if they want to kind of take a look at them and vet them, kind of a, on a one on one, you know, just surfacing that, um, when those people appear on people.org rather than making it a list. I'm not sure what you mean. You mean if someone is, well, the new user label shows up when there's a new account. Right. And then but then the there's the community members status. Right, so I can't remember what it's called. But are you saying what, but they're supposed to be able to patch to something? Or no, just if they are actively participating, if they are a maintainer on modules, you know, if they have made commits, but they are not get vetted. So just a way to mark that account and if someone sees that, they say, okay, yeah, they're cool. So it's kind of the project admin or the get admit of the list, I suppose. Yeah. Brian? Okay. So if there's, if Brian doesn't, rem oh, you remembered. Sorry. Um, so someone will be able to promote a project, right? They'll have one that is downloadable and people can use it on their sites. I'm imagining a scenario where some subcontractor gets hired to create a Drupal module for a company and they put one up there and then they never come back and it sits there and it gets used. Is there some arbitrary line of like n number of usages or downloads? So we've discussed this, sort of like namespace plotting and that kind of stuff. Um, we haven't, but, but. He's actually going, he's going another direction. Yeah, not, not namespace plotting, but like they've got a module up and it actually gets usage far and wide but the developer has no interest of going through the application process and actually come and get vetted because they're gone. They just have a module that everybody uses. But that's that's going to be a project that exists, so it'll probably still be um, oh, subject to the rules of like somebody else taking it over, or or even if they just so decide never to. Well, the, the current policy make a on one point release. Yeah, the current policy on transferring ownership of a project would apply in that case. So there's already a policy. But that user who originally promoted it would not get vetted. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm kind of polluted it with the, the user being gone. I mean, they're there, they just don't care about creating a 1.0 release because people are using their module and they're just like, whatever, it's just but beta the one, beta two, beta going three. To, it's still gonna sit there with all the warnings and everything else that we usually will have. Right, but if people use people it anyways. Use it, people use it at their own use risk. It anyway. It's no different than the situation now where people download dev releases of things and they take it. We're, we're probably gonna put, like my goal for this, and we haven't talked implementation, would be that the project page has something ugly in it and update status from site to site has something ugly in it. So it's gonna be really obvious you're using it and just, you know, if you download code from a sandbox, you have the same problem. Okay. Um, last year at DrupalCon, there was uh, some questions during the Friday sprint about doing some type of mentoring for the project application review process, like people that were interested in it. If there is significant interest, if you have friends, um, we might be able to do something like that again. We did that last year. We might be able to do another one like that, just to answer questions okay. on the on the Friday sprinter. Okay, great. Do you have the uh, last slide? I did. I had the last slide up. Oh, okay. So go there. Do the feedback form. Fill out some evaluations, whatever it's called, um, and the custom and page. And come to the sprint. And definitely come to sprints on Friday. And if you are really, really interested in helping with those automated scanners, talk to Michael. There's already some interest shown in it, so I'd love to turn that over to people who have interest in scanning large chunks of code. Going from there, that would be great. Okay. 
I'm gonna save all these coins. I have a, it's for a friend. It's for a friend. I actually gave him my name so he can give me a free gold card for my birthday if I ever go to the gift shop and buy a gift card. Okay, how does the LTD speed long? Thank you. 